Welcome to my KCC Edition channel. I am Teacher James Marika from Mutu Gold Boys High School. Uh, kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell such that you get notified once I upload a new video. Today we are looking at uh, KCC Edition. Uh, our topic is classification of substances. And today we are looking the 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 a question that can be set from one of the methods which is used to separate substance and that is chromatography. So we are doing all the analysis, all the possible questions that can be set from a chromatography, a method which is used to separate uh, colored substances. So the study the diagram below, I have this diagram on this white board as you can see. The diagram below uh, Study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So the diagram is just here. So we have this diagram as you can see. This diagram is the diagram represents a chromatograph paper. And let us see some of the questions which are normally set from this uh, chromatograph. So question one, we are supposed to name the technique used to separate the diagram. So we have a solid end here, and then we have the mixtures A, P, C, and D. Now, what is the technique which is normally used to separate the dye? The technique used to separate the dye is ascending paper chromatography. It's just ascending paper chromatography because the, the spots are moving upwards. So we have it is ascending paper chromatography. That is the technique used to separate. Uh, indicate the solvent front and the baseline. The solvent front is the, the, the farthest point where a solvent reaches. So this is where we have our solvent front. So this is a solvent. We have this is a, a solvent front. And then the origin where the, the solvent starts. Is called the baseline. So this one here, it is the it is the baseline. That symbol you can have that. So we have the solvent front up there, and then we have the baseline. Sometimes the diagram will be drawn on the question paper, and the letters we are given. For instance, you will get here, for example, letter K, and then here you will get letter F. Then you will be asked to give. Uh, what does the letters represent? So if it is a letter K, you just say that K represents the solvent front and then we have letter M, it normally represents the, the baseline. Now, we then, which chromatograms are present in the dye E? So which chromatogram are present in the, the, the E? To know the chromatogram which is present in a given dye, they must have to move the equal distance, the equidistance from the baseline. So those, those chromatograms which are moving the equidistance from the baseline, they are normally present in the, in the, uh, present in the dye, or we can call them the identical substances. So in that case now, if you can look at this one, we have the each which is here, which is separate substance to these spots. Then we have A and C. A, one spot of A is at this far end here. So you can see that it is moving the equal distance from the baseline with that of with that of the E. And we can also look at the C. C, one of the spot of the C is moving the same distance with one of the spot of the E. So you can look at this one here. So this guy is moving the same distance and this one are moving the same distance. So those dyes which move, those, those uh, the chromatograms which moves the same distance as the dye, they are in the mixture because or we call them the identical substance. So in that case we talk of dye A and then we have C. This one here they, they are present in the, in the, the they are present in, in the dye E because they move the equal distance from the baseline. Which dye is insoluble? Which dye is insoluble? To know the dye which is insoluble, the insoluble dye 
they move zero distance from the baseline or they move the least distance from the baseline and remember the insole for that sometimes we call it the most sticky die in that case now the most sticky die or the insole for that they move the least distance from the baseline or they just move the zero distance from the baseline in that case now you can look at you can look at uh, you can look at the diet uh, it, it moves zero distance from the baseline. So once it moves the zero distance from the baseline, it means that one has an insoluble die or it is the most stick die. Which die is the one? So in my the other video, I discussed about the pure die and the pure impure die. Pure substances they normally move make only one spot. Pure substance make only one spot. In pure substance, they make more than one spot. So in that case here, you can look at compare the A, B, C, D, and E. You realize that we have this here A, which is moving more than two spots. So if it is moving more than two spots, it means that this guy it is in pure die. So which guy is in pure in that case? It is E because it, it has more than one spot. So the pure substance separates only into one spot, the pure substance separates into many spots, which is more than one. Now, which dye is most soluble? The most soluble dye, they move the farthest distance from the baseline. So as you can see from here, the, we have the, the A, P, C and D in that case. A is moving the farthest distance from the, the baseline. So the one which is moving the fast, farthest distance from the baseline, it is the most soluble dye. So if you require to give an explanation, you just say it is because it moves the farthest distance, farthest distance from the from the baseline. Now, what the conditions are required to separate the chromatogram in this experiment? What the conditions now? Or what makes it possible for the separation to take place in this chromatogram? So we have the properties that makes the separation to take place. One that uh, is uh, there is a difference in solubility of the substance. For these dyes to be separated, they must have different solubilities. And also we have difference in viscosity. So we have that difference in uh, viscosity or the difference in the stickiness. So you can have this is a viscosity or you can have the, the difference in the difference in the stickiness. So the difference in the stickiness of a substance or the difference in the viscosity is a property that makes the separation to take place. And also that we have difference in densities. Now the most suitable uh, solvent uh, uh, used in this experiment. In a chromatography, the most suitable solvent which is used in the experiment in chromatography, we talk of uh, you can use ethanol can be used, propanol can be used, propyl glycol can be, they can be used. So you name the propanol, ethanol, or what you call it, the propyl glycol or methanol. So you name. Give a reason why water cannot be used uh, in this experiment. Why water cannot be used in this experiment? Water cannot be used in this experiment because water does not dissolve most of the organic compounds. Water does not dissolve most of the organic compounds. You know, the idea here is to separate compounds based on their solubility in different types of in different types of the solvent. So in that case, the chromatogram paper is normally a cellulose, the cellulose paper, which is a porous compound. And also water is a porous compound. So the chromatogram paper is a porous compound, water is also a porous compound. So when they are porous compounds and it means that water can, can be dissolved in that, the chromat the, that chromatogram paper, which is the cellulose, it can be dissolved in water and therefore there will be no separation which, uh, which, can, which, can, take, which can take place. So that's why the reason why that why water cannot be used here, water does not uh, does does not dissolve most of the organic solvents 
in the state now we are using the proper noun or we use ethanol or we use the proper glyco whereby the proper glyco or ethanol or methanol they are it is they, they are nanipora compounds and the 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 chromatography paper is a pora is a pora compound in that case now the, the there is they will not be dissolved why the pen ink cannot be used to mark the chromatograph paper in the experiment. Pen ink cannot be used to mark the chromatograph paper in the, in, the, in the experiment. This is because the, the pen ink contains the dye molecules that it, that it can interfere with visible interpretation of the visible interpretation of the chromatograph. In, 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 in the state, a pencil can be used to mark because a pencil is made up of graphite or a lead. A lead or a graphite, in that case, it does not interfere. It does not interfere with the physical interpretation of the, the information. So, if you want to give a reason why the pen ink cannot be used, that's what you can say. Explain why the spot uh, kept above the baseline. As you can see, we have these spots here. We have spot D, spot, spot D, spot C, and spot A. They are kept above the baseline. Why are they being kept above the baseline? There are two reasons why. One, to prevent the spots from getting dissolved into the mobile phase. And then number two, to allow the mobile phase to stabilize for a few seconds. So that is the reason why we have these spots are kept above the, the baseline. So using spot C and uh, using spot C and, and solvent E in that case, calculate the RF value. The RF value, so the R in this case, R stands for retention, the R stands for retention in that case, and then F stands for factor. F stands for, it stands for, F stands for factor. So, how do you calculate the retention factor? The retention factor is normally given by the distance moved by the spot all over the distance moved by the solvent. So, we say here that the, the, R, the RF, the RF value, that is, RF value is equivalent to the distance moved by the spot. So, we have this is a distance moved, distance moved by the spot, distance moved by spot, you divide by the distance moved by solvent. So you divide by the distance, moved by solvent. Moved by Solvent. So that is how you can calculate the, the retention, retention, uh, retention factor value. So the retention factor value now is equal to the, the distance moved at the spot. The spot here, spot C is moving a distance of 9.6 centimeters. So this one you will have a distance of 9, it is 9.6 centimeters. Then you divide by the distance moved by the solenoid E. The distance moved by this solenoid from the baseline, it is 12.0 centimeters. The distance moved by uh, spot C from the baseline is 9.6 centimeters. So this one we have this as 12.0 centimeters. So the distance moved by the spot, which is 9.6 centimeters, and the, all over the distance moved by the the solvent which is uh, 12.0 centimeters and this one now it gives us 0 0.8 remember this one it has, it has no unity because it is just the ratio and uh, you can look at this one here that the value of this retention factor is always less than 1 because the distance moved by the solvent is longer compared by the distance moved by, moved by the spot why do different solvents, why do different solvents travel different heights in a chromatograph paper? Why 
to different solvents to rather to different heights in the chromatograph paper. A very good question that different solvents they have a different in the molecular forces. And when engaging the paper, the paper, and when engaging and the paper chromatography, the different forces result in different heights, as simple as that. Then we have another question here that where we have a green coloring material was placed at the center of a circular piece of paper and allowed to dry. Drops of a solvent were added and eventually two circles were produced. So the drops of a solvent, solvent here we have said that the most suitable solvent used here, the most solvent used here, we either use the propanol, so we have a, a propanol, you can use propanol or you can use ethanol. Use ethanol here or you can use the propyl glycol. So in that case, the, 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 so the, this is the most suitable solvent. And if you know that uh, water cannot be used in this experiment because of the reason that we have said. So the green color and material was placed at the center of a circular piece of paper and allowed it to dry. Drops of a solvent were added and eventually two circles were produced as you can see. So you can see here the drops were the drops of a solvent were placed here and then we have the two circles were produced. So we have the first circle and then we have the second circle that were produced. Now, name a process by which a dilute extract will have made more concentrated. A dilute extract will have made more concentrated simply by evaporation. Simply by evaporation, so they can be made more concentrated. Name a suitable piece of apparatus uh, for adding drops of a solvent uh, to the center at a controlled rate. So at a controlled rate, we are adding the drops of a solvent here. So in that case, we use uh, we are using a dropper. So a dropper in that case is used to add a dropper is used to add a solvent and the drops of a solvent at the center of this circular paper at a controlled rate. Then what is the name of the process by which the samples were produced? The name of the process by which the samples were produced is just paper chromatography. So we have that is a paper chromatography. That is a process by which the 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 by which the, the process the samples were produced. Then what information does this experiment provide? What information does this experiment provide about the coloring uh, matter in glass? This one, the information it, uh, provided this one that uh, the green color in glass consists of two components. It consists of two components because the formation of the two, uh, the, two, the two samples that were produced. Then we have state uh, at least two application of uh, application of chromatography. So the application of chromatography, you can say, it can be used in a separation of dyes. It can be used in uh, analyzing dyes in the food, uh, in food and coloring. It can also be used in uh, in the pharmacy and the medicine to test the, the, the purity of the purity, the purity of drugs. You can also say that uh, this chromatography can also apply to sports, whereby it is used to, to identify the illegal drugs. If the illegal drugs, for example, the steroids in the blood, the blood of uh, the blood of the athletics. You can also say that it can be used in the food industry to identify the contaminants in, in, a, in food. So that is some of the, the questions that can be said from these uh, questions on chromatography, a method which is used to separate the uh, colored, colored, colored substances. And then we say that the study of color is normally called the chromatology. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and watch and share. Thank you.